This is the Business Owners IT Podcast with Anthony Garish and Ryan Carter, where tomorrow's technology meets today's conversations. I am Tony Garish. And I'm Alex Aguirre, and this is the Business Owners IT Podcast. A podcast where we discuss tips, tricks, and solutions for business owners involving all things tax. So let's dive right in today, and what we're going to talk about is managed services and co-managed services. That's it. So... Uh, so I'm gonna let Alex ask you know ask me some questions here, and then I'll try to answer what what the what it is or what he thinks it is. What do you think managed services is? Start with what you think it is. Yeah. So managed services is you know it's it's basically technology services for businesses, um, you know. But you know I'm gonna let you do it, tell him because I want you to go through it and yeah. And uh, so what IT managed services or managed services means to us, right? There's a lot of different variations of IT services. Uh, uh, managed IT services, but we like to say we become your IT uh, IT department, right? We're going to do, you know, we do everything for you uh, that's related to your infrastructure, um, that's related to your firewalls, your switches. We provide cybersecurity. We lead with cybersecurity, mm-hmm. right? So if you don't, if you don't, if you're if if you're not, if you don't like cybersecurity, you don't want to pay for cybersecurity, then you're you're probably not a good fit for us because. Mm-hmm. You, you can't manage, you know, 3,000 plus endpoints and not have a good cyber hygiene. But in our situation, there's three components to managed services. There's a labor piece, so there's a charge for the labor, and then there's a charge for users, and there's a charge for um, devices, and the charges for users and devices are for the, the software. Mm-hmm. Um, we broke it out. We used to just put it all bundled together, but COVID hit. And, and when COVID hit, you know, most people got two computers and – and, um, you know, some people got three computers. It's like they had laptops and they had all these devices. And, you know, there's a software piece that's in this that, that you know, that we're paying for. So, you know, so all managed services are all you can eat. Um, and they include, uh, uh, and we even do projects, you know, we'll do a project for you if it's less than 20 hours. Um, a lot of people don't have that philosophy, but that's what we do. Um, there's many service providers out there. They all do it different. You know, some people have... Uh, you know, different bundles or different, you know, gold, silver, platinum. Um, but we tend to be just pretty straightforward. Yeah. What I'm seeing a lot of, right, is, you know, larger businesses that have an IT department, right? One, two, three guys, you know, will look and there, there, there's some, uh, you know, they'll have requisitions out for, you know, IT help desk or a network admin. And, you know, we end up being a perfect fit. You want to talk a little bit about how yeah. How we hop in there. So there's another thing called co-managed IT, right? So we do have some co-managed IT uh, situations too. Um, typically, uh, you know, our co-managed uh, thing, we have a, d- a little bit different agreement, but the, you know, we're able to provide, uh, we're able to provide these these companies, right, with um, software that they normally can't get, right? They can't get it um uh, or they don't know how to get it, right? They can't really purchase it for what we can sell it to them for. Yeah. You know, because we're buying in bulk, right? So we're buying for 3,000, you know, endpoints or whatever. You know, they might be buying for 20, 60, you know, 75. Um, so the co-man is IT. You know, we we help them, and when they get in trouble, we help them. Like if, you know, we don't have any cloud strike. But we, you know, cloud strike is in everybody's mind. But if we did have a customer that was using cloud strike that was co-managed, we would go over there and help them, you know, get it back up. We'd give them the guys. Um, the uh, and other things that you do with co-manage usually, you know, you, we don't have access to everything in the system, right? Sometimes we only have access to a small portion of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we do do work with some uh, some big hospitals and some cancer treatment centers um, that you know the IT company or their IT department runs their firewalls, their switches, and the the WAN and all that stuff. But then we manage all of the computers that are inside of whatever facility we're doing. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity, you know, out there, uh, you know, especially, you know, if you look like like with Delta and the rest of them are down as part of the CrowdStrike thing, you know, if they had an IT service provider or some IT service providers on retainer, you know, they might be able to help them get out there and fix, you know, deploy, you know, their staff to fix those things. Mm-hmm. So sometimes IT departments are... They don't need 30 guys, but sometimes they might need, you know, an extra five, 10 hands-on type of people if if they're doing something. Yeah. So, yeah. The other thing that came up the other day, uh, Tony, is, uh, you know, the customer asked me, are you guys an MSP or an MSSP? And I told him, I was like, well, we're both. Well, you know, we're a yeah. cybersecurity firm, but uh, we, we fix computers. So what would you say? 
Yeah, so, I mean, I, I wouldn't classify us as an MSSP, but we lead with cybersecurity. So typically an MSSP is just going to do the cybersecurity piece. They don't care about the workstations. They don't care about the help desk side of it. So, I mean, that's not really our, our uh, you know, our wheelhouse, but we provide a lot of the same service that an MSSP would do. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we help people align with uh, um, align with frameworks like the CIS framework, the FTC framework. Uh, you know, we use a solution called Compliancy Manager. It's a, it's a solution from Kaseya. I don't know who, who they bought it from, but I think it, it also comes from like Rapid Fire Tools. Um, that helps us that them tools is where we can uh, track that or show that we align with them. Um, you know, we do when we follow the guidelines, we do provide SIMs. And basically, a SIM is a, a is a hardware piece that monitors your network. It's you know the, the 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 beauty of a SIM is it looks for everything that's not a computer. So you know, like if somebody was to plug in in a a USB key into a TV or like a a, a Fire Stick or a Raspberry Pi. I mean, NASA was hacked with a Raspberry Pi in the back of a TV. Those are the types of things that we would see in a SIM. Or if something was talking out to Europe. You know, mm -hmm. Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, through the SIM, through the network, it's monitoring the firewalls, the switches, and all that. So we do do that for customers too, especially because sometimes it has to meet the, uh, you know, they have to meet a certain regulatory regulatory well or a certain meet a certain, uh, you know, thing on a on a framework. You know, um, you know, a lot of our customers were aligning with the CIS framework, which is, is you know, is an easy one to align with. It has eighteen controls, three groups. And it's an easy it's an easy one to, to uh, start to align with. Group one and two are are pretty simple to do. Group three is a little bit harder and gets a little bit more money. But if you can do group one and two, you're doing better than you know half the people out there. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Yeah. So, uh, um, what else is there? I don't Any know. Any ideas? I mean, the other one is cybersecurity insurance. That's the one I hear a lot about, right? Yeah. So. So cybersecurity insurance again. A lot of times, when when we help uh, the way we help our customers with cybersecurity insurance, they get these questionnaires, right? The questionnaires like three, four, five, six pages. Sometimes it takes us a couple hours to do yeah, because no standardization. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, or they're, they're they're getting they're following frameworks too, right? They're asking questions from frameworks, right? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing this? And you know, sometimes it takes a couple hours because we verify because we're doing these, right? So we verify. Everything that we answer in a cybersecurity questionnaire for insurance, we verify because cybersecurity insurance companies don't want to pay. So if you guys answer a question wrong on one of those forms, right, if you answer a question wrong on one of those forms, they're not going to want to pay. So we need to substantiate, right, why Why did we say that our client has this, everything is bit lockered, or how did, why do we say that everything is backed up, or whatever we said, you know, we need to be able to substantiate shit substantiate that should they have a claim so yeah cybersecurity insurance is getting harder and harder to get um when i have to fill mine out for my errors and omissions and and uh professional liability i mean it usually takes me like two or three days i mean it's, it's a long process um to do so yeah cybersecurity is definitely insurance is getting harder to get you know and, and some of the questions they ask inside of their in those questionnaires aren't even valid i mean it's like you know you know, if you have you have, you could have other compensating controls that that helps mitigate the risk that they're asking for, mm -hmm. and you have to document that. Yeah, you think about uh, disaster recovery, right? Business continuity, and you know we're okay because we have the datos. So if something were to happen, you yeah. know we're up and running quickly. But you know, a lot of times when you work with these cybersecurity firms, they you know they take over, right? You had, a, you had an example. Yeah. So yeah. So if you do have a, a cybersecurity event like CDK, right? Um, the insurance companies are in charge, right? So if, if you remember, CDK was ransomed. They were ransomed twice, right? But they're not making – once you get into a situation like that, um, the insurance companies are making the decisions, not you. So even if you can restore, you have a data, you can restore really quickly, you know, they might stop you from restoring because they want to figure out how it happened. They want to figure out where it happened, right? They don't want to lose any of that forensics. So, uh, you know, they're kind of in charge. And uh, – it's a, you asked another part. Was it there was something else in that question in the beginning? Um, I lost my mind, but you know they. they well, there's, a, there's a verification. We could be up and running if they're not up and running. Yeah. Right. Then they take over, and it's like. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it's you know, oh, game. I know what I was going to say. The um, it's funny because you asked about backup and disaster recovery, but if you look at the CIS framework, I think it's like number 
11 or 12. It's way down on the list. It's not backup and disaster recovery is not the first thing in a CIS framework. It's 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 backwards. It's, huh? it's no, it's not really backwards. That's the way it is because the first thing is know all your computers, mm -hmm. right? That's the first thing and know all your software. So if you don't know all your computers and you know don't know all your software, how do you know how this happened, right? So there's a whole bunch of other steps in front. I mean, it used to be it's it's like the first dollar spent, the last dollar you know first dollar spent, last thing used, right? But the the backup and disaster the backup is very very important, but it's not as important as some of the other stuff because you have to be able to stop the threat. You have to be able to, you know, to to know where everything's at. If you don't know where everything's at, you don't know if it came from a user at home, it came from a user, you know, overseas. You don't know. You don't know anything. And I think the the first one is know all your assets. Mm -hmm. I think the second one is know all your users or all your software or something like that. I don't. I don't have them all figured out, but it's the backup and disaster recovery is down towards the, the bottom. Yeah. You know, and uh, these days also with ransomware. Right. They also steal all your data. So, you know, once they steal your data, you could say, OK, you can recover. But if you don't pay me my, you know, ten million dollars, I'm going to release all your data on the dark web. Yeah. You know, I'm going to sell it out there. And uh, and, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's surprising what you get back when we do these dark web idea uh, yeah. audits and we run the information. You get, you know, you get client information, you get client passwords and the customers are like, what? Yeah. So yeah, and sometimes inf information, you know, sometimes when you do a dark web scan for, you know, our customers and we look at their passwords, um, sometimes they're real passwords and you have to tell your customer, hey, this is a real password. Uh, if this is your real password, you know, you need to go change it because so it's, it's out there for sale. Mm -hmm. So um, any other any other things about managed services or cybersecurity? Hmm. Now, when do you, when, so, okay, there's a lot of businesses out there that are, you know, maybe they have, you know, a lot of applications in the cloud. Maybe they have, you know, a certain personnel where, you know, they really haven't thought about, you know, doing managed services. Like what, you know, at what point should a business owner be thinking about, hey, I need to outsource this to someone that does this every day? Well, okay, so one, one thing is that for sure is, um, you know, it doesn't matter if your stuff is in the cloud or not. I mean, we use the cloud, right? It's basically our data on somebody else's computer. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got to realize that when you go to a cloud solution, right, first thing is, is if you don't have internet, you don't have access to the cloud. Now, a lot of us have cell phones and we compare our cell phones and that's all good, you know, but when you're running a doctor's office or a dentist office or uh, any, you know, thing and, and you rely on your internet in the office to be able to, to work and you don't have internet, it's uh you know it's it's a problem the other thing with with that is that um so you know even people who are in the cloud can use us because we can help them with firewalls right we can help them with multiple internet connections so if one goes down it automatically fails over we can do a failover to cellular they also still have to have a network that's secure because if somebody gets into their network right if they get into their network they can get into their cloud services and you wouldn't believe how many people store their passwords on their desktop for all the cloud services mm -hmm. you know and, and no matter where the data sits even in the cloud right no matter where the da data sits it still needs to be backed up and internally i just told my son nick i said you know what i need you to use power bi and i want you to go into autotask which is our solution and pull all the data in case something happens there i have my data mm -hmm. you know because because if i mean i could lose autotask but we also have a lot of data, customer data, information in there that we would want. And all of these companies that are providing cloud services, again, the idea is your data on somebody else's servers or software, right? They're all susceptible to be down. And when they do go down, you know, it's usually, you know, it's usually 20 days, 25 days before they actually get you back up. And again, it's not because a lot of times it's not because they don't have backups. It's because they're no longer in charge. They got to get the insurance companies. They got to get the lawyers. They got to get the forensics people. They got to get the people to restore. You know, it's it's um, it's a process. So, so. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess the, uh, if you don't have any more questions, Alex. I no, can, I think that's it. I think that yeah, was a so, good overview there. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. I, uh, uh, it's been a it's a great having these sessions to talk about things that we know. Um, in a. Uh, Again, thank you for tuning in to the Business Owners IT Podcast, and we hope to see you next week. Unique Computing Solutions. Your IT challenges solved.